This short video is to show you what's inside a molded case circuit breaker. This cutaway view kind of shows you what goes on um, with the electrical circuit and how the operation of a breaker happens. If you can see here, this breaker starts with a piece of bus bar and that bus is connected to the line side, the bus bar and a panel board or a, uh, it may have lugs on it if it's independently mounted. And then as that bus bar goes down here, you can see inside here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a silver cadmium alloy contact that's called the stationary contact. Another breaker that's here, if I pull these arc shoots out of the way, you can kind of see that silver cadmium contact down there in the bottom. Then this top part, this upper part here, is what's considered to be the movable contact. That movable contact is what opens and closes the breaker either with the switch or when it, it trips and it opens up. And then these small plates, if you can see I did that on this one here, these small thin plates are what are called arc chutes. When that breaker opens up, that movable contact separates that circuit. And when that circuit is separated, the magnetic field of the arc and the heat from the arc gets drawn into those plates which then divide and quench the arc. This movable contact then has three pieces of flexible conductor or flexible bus that move down to the bottom here where you can see this screw bolts through to this other bus. That bus bar goes through and then that's where our output lugs are located. Now there's a couple key parts to this output side after this movable contact is this piece of metal right here that you see between that flexible bus screw and this lower bus is the what's called a bimetallic strip or bimetallic element. This element is made out of two dissimilar metals that when the current for the circuit flows through from this side through the movable contact and then that bimetallic element is in series with this bus all the current for the circuit flows through that bimetallic element and causes that to heat up. And then this part here, this metal part over here, that is what's considered the short circuit or the instantaneous element. When you, you would have a fault or short circuit on this breaker, these conductors would have a, a strong magnetic field around them, and that strong magnetic field will cause this to become pulled together. Now if we close this breaker, you can see that movable contact close that circuit up. With the circuit now closed, that current will flow through this bus, through that contact, through the movable, arm, uh, movable contact armature, then this bimetallic element is in series and then there's our output. If there were a short circuit or a fault and that magnetic field would pull this element down and closed, then this breaker would trip into the open position. If we, if we also look at this breaker, this breaker has what's called an adjustable trip mechanism. On the front of the breaker, you could turn it from min to max, and when we adjust that from min to max, you'll see the gap of that uh, armature for the magnetic trip element change its spacing. If I put it down the min, you can see now it will take less magnetic energy to pull that together and trip that breaker, and then that breaker would then open up that circuit under a short circuit or fault, fault current. That's the instantaneous trip or the magnetic part of the thermomagnetic circuit breaker. The next thing that we're going to kind of demonstrate here, and since we can't put current through this breaker that's been cut away, there's this bimetallic element here. This long tab goes up, and if you see this screw here, that bimetallic element, when it hits that screw, that's a calibration screw, that'll push this mechanism and cause the breaker to operate. So we're going to use a heat gun to get that to happen. So if I hold this here, and we heat that up, you can watch that move and that mechanism will cause that breaker to trip. So this is simulating that you would have more current than what that element is set for going in that breaker. You can see it's now moving and then the breaker trips in the working position. So that's the thermal part of the thermomagnetic um, circuit breaker and that would have to cool down. The breaker can then be reset and then the, the breaker can be put back in operation.